Hello and welcome. This is Reddit Tosker. And today I want to talk about something really special. Something particularly good. Something glorious, even. You see, for too long, we Insectglave users, Insectglave users that follow the true path, the path of the aerial Insectglave, have been mocked, scorned, and oppressed. We are constantly told that the Insectglave's optimal DPS is on the ground, that all our fancy aerial moves are just a waste of time, that we're only supposed to use the aerial Insectglave as a means to avoid damage or to do some damage while we reposition to somewhere else. And so, we have been forced to crawl upon the earth like worms, like vermin, like longsword players, completely bereft of intelligence or grace and far removed from the skies that should have been our home. But with the addition of Monster Hunter Sunbreak, this is the case no longer. The Aerial Insect Glaive playstyle has been buffed dramatically, both in how many cool things we can do while in the air, and by how much damage all of those things can do. And so this video is going to be a guide for how the new Insect Glaive playstyle works and how to use it effectively, so that we Insect Glaive users never have to touch grass again. Let's go ahead and get started. The heart of our new playstyle comes from the new switch skill Kinsec Slash, which replaces Jumping Advancing Slash. Kinsec Slash is a technique you can only use midair, where you thrust forward with your glaive and the Kinsect, and then if the slash connects, you'll be able to perform a vaulting dance, absorbing the extract. You can aim the direction that your Kinsec Slash goes in by pointing your reticle in that direction. The extract you get will correspond to the part of the monster's body that you hit. After the hit and the vaulting dance, you can then dash again to reposition yourself, and then do another Kinsec Slash. You can do this a maximum of three times, and each time that you successfully do it will count as a charge for your Diving Wyvern, which will buff the Diving Wyvern's attack if you hit the monster before you hit the ground. Now here's the thing about the Kinsec Slash. If you get the red extract from the monster, following Kinsec Slashes will no longer accrue you more extracts. However, once you have the red extract, you'll be able to do an enhanced insect spiker as a trade-off. The enhanced insect spiker is a repositioning tool that gets you on the ground quickly and lets you do a lot of damage when you do it. In an ideal situation, the optimum thing you want to do with your Kinsect Slash is use it to get the yellow and white extracts, then get the red extract, and then finally attack with your fully charged Diving Wyvern. The whole rotation does a lot of damage. And even the damage of the Kinsec Slash is nothing to sneeze at, it is a significant amount. Now, a weakness of the Kinsec Slash is that if you accidentally get the red extract, you won't be able to get the other extracts with other Kinsec Slashes, you'll have to go to the ground and get them normally. This is a problem, because the ground is gross and icky, and it takes you out of the flow of what you're doing. And that's where the new Silkbind Switch skill comes into play, because it pairs very nicely with everything else we're doing. The new skill is Kinsect Glide, which replaces Silkbind Vault. Kinsect Glide sends out a Kinsect, and then you use a wire bug to quickly jump to it. Like Kinsect Slash, Kinsect Glide will go in the direction that you point your reticle. When the Kinsect comes in contact with a monster, it'll absorb an extract that corresponds with that part of the monster's body. And unlike Kinsect Slash, you can get any extract at any time. As a result, in situations where you mistakenly got the red extract with Kinsec Slash and you didn't get the yellow or white buffs, you can use Kinsec Glide to get the buff that you're missing without slowing the pace of combat or touching the icky, icky ground. Like Silk Bind Vault, you can use Kinsec Glide to reposition yourself, since after performing one, you can do a mid-air evade. Kinsec Glide is pretty great. The only problem with it is that it's a little more unwieldy than Silk Bind Vault and harder to use as a positioning or orienting tool. Now let's move on to the kind of Kinsect that you want to be using. I advise you to use the Blunt Assist Dual Color Defense Kinsect. There are a lot of reasons why this Kinsect pairs very well with this specific playstyle. First of all, it's the best way to open an encounter. With this Kinsect, you can use Kinsect Slash to target the monster's body and get the white and yellow extract immediately. This makes you immune to roars. And while the monster is still doing its roar, you can get the red extract from its head and finish off with a diving wyvern before it even gets done. And because you used two Kinsect Slashes before that diving wyvern, it will have two charges of extra damage. It is a fantastic opening that works with almost all monsters. This situation is a perfect example of generally why you want to use the dual color 
assist Kinsex. You aren't always going to be able to get three charges before doing your Diving Wyvern, but there are going to be a lot of situations where you might be able to get one or two, and in those situations it pays to be able to grab your buffs rapidly, while having the added benefit of accruing charges for your Diving Wyvern. Now the reason that we're getting the Defense Beetle specifically is because we don't want the Red Extract. We don't want to get it accidentally before the end. That obviously rolls out the Attack Kinsect, but the Speed Kinsect is also ruled out, because it will sometimes get a Red Extract from parts of the body that wouldn't normally. The Defense Kinsect, on the other hand, is reliable. It will always get yellow and white, and will only ever get the Red Extract if you're hitting where the Red Extract is. This fact also helps a lot when you're using Kinsect Glide to correct your mistakes. If you use Kinsect Slash and accidentally get the Red Extract, even if it's your first Extract, you can use Kinsect Glide and target most of the body, and that part will guarantee you a yellow and white Extract. So even if you make the worst mistake and get the Red Extract first, one Kinsect Glide will get you to full buffs. Finally, the reason that you're using a Blunt Defense Kinsect rather than the Severing Defense Kinsect is because with this playstyle you are doing a constant and steady stream of Blunt damage. In my hunts, I'll typically get two or three stuns per monster. Once you have your three buffs, you can use Kinsect Slash to constantly pound away at the monster, doing good amounts of Blunt damage the entire time. You'll also be doing stun damage when you're doing your ground combos, and you'll do great stun damage with the Kinsect every time you do a Diving Wyvern at the monster's head. And that part pairs very nicely with Kinsect Glide. Kinsect Glide does a little bit of stun damage when you send the Kinsect out to the monster's body part. And Kinsect Glide transitions into Diving Wyvern very quickly. And it also has the added benefit of not using any stamina to do. In fact, you recover stamina while you're doing the Kinsect Glide. And so you could use Kinsect Glide to get right on top of the monster's head, and then perform a Diving Wyvern. This is useful in situations where you lack the stamina to mid-air evade towards the monster's head. Since Kinsect Glide, like Silk by Malt, does not reset the charges on your Diving Wyvern. So long as you don't touch the ground, the charges remain. Alright, now let's talk about your settings. In order to do this kind of play effectively, you need to have a very high camera speed. If you're playing with a controller, you need to have it at the very least at very fast. And you should go to super fast if you can tolerate it. The option that controls how fast your camera moves while looking through the reticle for your Kinsect is the gunner reticle speed option. But you'll also want to increase your camera speed option in general. If you're not used to having the camera go this fast, then it'll be a little disorienting at first. But after a bit, you will get used to it, and you'll be able to precisely target the part of the monster that you want to. Plus, you will feel super cool with this fast camera and you making split-second mid-air decisions. Like I said, you should try and work your way up to having it at super fast. But if you find it too disorienting, then very fast ought to work fine as well. Now, a weakness of this playstyle is that your mid-air evades and your kinsect slashes will be a heavy drain on your stamina while in mid-air. This will make it difficult to play this playstyle optimally, especially if you want to play through all of Master Rank in this way. Since when you're starting out, you won't be able to use skills that would help mitigate this like Constitution. Thankfully, there is a way to deal with this. You can perform lots of mid-air evades and kinsec slashes, even without slotting in any skills, by using the Fighter Dango food buff for every quest. If you use a Dango ticket for the Fighter Dango, then it'll have a 90% activation rate. And if it does activate, the Fighter Dango effect will give you a lot more wiggle room in midair. You can also bring a Palico that has the Go Fight Win effect, and that'll be especially useful in the situations where the Fighter Dango doesn't activate. Okay, finally I have one last piece of advice. You should bring buddies that have sleep weapons for the hunt. Sleep works really well for this playstyle, and better than Paralysis in my opinion. Because if you're quick on the uptake and you notice that the monster is going to sleep, you can attack it with your Kinsect Slash as soon as you notice, or better yet, you might actually be in the air as soon as you notice, and use those Kinsect Slashes to charge your Diving Wyvern as high as you risk it going. And when the monster's finally asleep, you do a Diving Wyvern right to its weak spot, taking maximum advantage of that double sleep damage. It is extremely effective, and it works basically all the time. Once you're expecting the monsters to go to sleep, it's very easy to get a Diving Wyvern hit that already has two or three charges. Alright, now let's talk about the important thing. Is this meta? Is this going to be the new meta for the Insect Glaive? Well, I don't know yet. The game's barely been out, and I need to do more testing. 
But it is telling that my answer isn't an immediate no, it's a strong maybe. Because those Kinsex Lashes do do a lot of damage, and they do come out in rapid succession, and you can chain them into a Diving Wyvern with a lot of damage itself. So I think there's a strong possibility that it does comparable damage to whatever the Insect Lave meta happens to be, or that if it doesn't lag behind, it won't lag behind too much. It does really good damage, and it's really fun. It's the strongest aerial Insect Glaive has ever been. Best of all though, we Insect Glaive mains no longer have to tread the earth with the other lowly peasant weapons. We can finally truly take to the skies and be in the place we were always meant to be. And that's the end of this video. As always, thank you very much for watching.